So hello, Lucas here again with a new DIY video uh, and this is a pretty exciting one when I may admit that. So today I want to talk a bit about how to build such a great light. This is um, a DIY KinoFlow type of light. Um, it's pretty big, It's uh, I guess it's around one meter. I will lift it up so you can see it's really big and uh, yeah it makes a really, really great light. Great light. Um, this is really nice for lighting green screens, for example, or simply to light people. Uh, it's a very soft light at CFL, I guess. So um, this particular light costed me around 50 bucks. Uh, I think you can make it cheaper or it may be more expensive. Um, yet uh, this depends where you can get the parts and if you can get the parts. Uh, but I think 50 bucks is a pretty good measurement for such a light. So when I started making these videos, these reviews on YouTube, um, actually I didn't have uh, some proper lighting and the lighting was really bad. And uh, then accidentally, one day, I stepped upon some parts in a Home Depot, which were pretty cheap, and I built my first um, four bank DIY KinoFlow, which is simply standing over there. Every review I did, I think from the second of the um, anamorphic adapter ones on, uh, was shot in this setup simply with one Kino Flow light over there and one other little light over there. And this is the whole setup. And I think for these kinds of shoots, it's a pretty cheap and convincing good lighting solution. So when I built these lamps, uh, the production wasn't too well documented actually. I made some photographs, but um, I don't think they help that much. Still, um, it's pretty easy to build these, so um, I just will get uh, with you through the parts first and then I show you how easy it is to build them together. So the first thing on the parts list is of course the lamps. I actually um, could buy these banks with the lights inserted in them uh, for I think 5 bucks a piece. Um, this makes 55 bucks for all 5 banks if you want 5 banks. These lamps are Osram bulbs with uh, 4000 Kelvin. Uh, actually, you would want to have something around 5000 Kelvin up to 5500 uh, Kelvin. Uh, the problem is in Germany this is not very common to buy in the store. So if you can get 5000 Kelvin, take these, uh, but you can get pretty good examples with these too. And it's something to mount it together. I used um, aluminium stripes, pre-drilled. This one is pretty cool. You could of course use um, something different like wood. Maybe the second most important thing is cables. I simply bought, uh, I think, a few meters of cable. Um, you need uh, a cable box like this, um, where you can storage the, the wiring. A switch like this is optional. I would recommend it as it's pretty nice. It, you can simply uh, turn on and off it uh, very quickly. And for the rest you need, of course, screws and some master terminals. So now let's take a look at how this was actually built. So the first thing you want to do uh, when building these is to mount the, the banks on the uh, aluminum stripes. And um, you can drill through the aluminum uh, if you don't have pre-drilled like I have here. Um, still you want to use two screws on the edges so it doesn't twist around like this. It's always straight then. And you do this on the upper side of the lamp and of course on the lower side of the lamp. And on this way uh, it's already pretty stable and uh, you have a somewhat usable frame. The second thing I did was wire the things inside the banks, which is pretty easy. I just got the cable in here and there the other things are already cabled in here, in this lamp. Um, there are these little uh, cable boxes already inserted with a little luster terminal. I simply wired them together by colors. Please don't overestimate uh, the danger of electricity, ask someone when doing this. Then I drilled the, uh, the ground cable, which is the green uh, yellowish one in my country at least, um, to the case. So it's always pretty good grounded. Yeah, and this actually is it already, uh, the wiring inside the lamp. So the next important thing actually is um, the wiring inside the cable box of uh, the lamp, which is somewhat the heart of this build. Um, you could use common uh, luster terminals for this. Uh, actually, I did this in my first lamp, and this was a really hassle, a real hassle, as I had to wire the the connector from the wall to every uh, little cable inside here, and this was I really hated this because it was um, not fun at all. And then I um, discovered 
Vago, Vago uh, connectors. This is from a German company called Vago. These are pretty easy to handle. Simply you can uh, have the connectors right in here and you can always de and reattach these. You simply click them off like this and then you can uh, get the cables inside, close them again and it's pretty much wired. I would recommend it because it's really easy to wire but you don't need these. The last step would be to install a switch of course, as well as the connector to the end of the cable. Um, and then you're pretty much done. Um, there are optional things you could do, of course, to this lamp. Uh, what I did was um, I bought um, a windshield protector for my car, uh, the silverish ones, which you attach to them in the winter, and I cut stripes from it and simply got it in these, um, in these holes between the lamps so uh, that the light that these bulbs would beam up to here, get reflected right up front, so you don't lose as much light. But this is optional, you don't need this, I would recommend it so you don't lose this much light. The problem of these lights is that they are not dimmable at all. So what you can do actually is, um, this is CFL, this does not get too hot, when these run a bit they get hot but not that you burn your fingers. What you always can do is to simply twist them off. So um, these aren't connected anymore. These protectors on top will help it from uh, popping out. So if you have too much light you can simply decrease the light by twisting these bulbs off or on again just how you like it. So as I told you before I was really looking forward to make this video. Uh, the problem why I didn't make it earlier was I had no idea how I could mount this lamp on the tripod. And actually I wanted to have a mounting solution that wasn't too expensive. And um, then some days ago I stumbled across um, a solution on the Frugal Filmmaker group on Facebook and the simple solution to mount these lights on a tripod, on a regular tripod, is um, a simple ball head for cameras. First we want to prepare the light stand. This is a pretty um, small one. This is um, from a Mafrotto style Nano, I think. Um, it's named like that. Uh, it's pretty cool and pretty tough, but you would want to use a bit of a tougher um, tripod. But this is a proof of concept, so you know you can use such a light tripod with this too. When you buy a tripod, really make sure you don't have um, these, these quick release things on the, on the sections, just you want one with screws. So what's important about the light stand also is that you have a stud with a screw on top. So now we can simply take the ball head and screw it on top of this. Um, and I have to be honest with you though, this ball head is pretty expensive actually. This is a ball, Yogi Ball Head X, which is around 100 bucks I think. Yet there are cheaper uh, things you can buy. There are some pretty cheap ones from China for around 30 bucks. Such a tripod is uh, maybe around 20 bucks. Um, so uh, of course this is a bit more expensive than when you really want to mount these, these lamps on a, on a tripod. Yet uh, they make a beautiful light and um, nothing in the world is for free. I think it's a pretty easy solution to, to mount it. Um, yeah, also I had this tripod laying around, I had this ball head laying around and uh, so I can always reuse them any day that I want to. So what I did is I just um, added another aluminum stripe and screwed this uh, little plate for the ball head on here. So this is um, a pretty cheap solution. Um, if you don't have this long hole, here's a long hole, so I could get the screws too. And if you just have one hole for one, uh, one and fourth inch screw, just drill two holes at the sides of the plate. So uh, you really want to have two screws to hold this plate um, together with the, uh, with the light itself. <clears throat> Mounting this thing is pretty easy. It's even easier when you have a second person to help you. Yet um, I will try to show it you the best way I can. I would uh, recommend tilting this head a bit up, not in the 90 degree angle, and then simply get it in here. This is an arc Swiss mount, so um, basically uh, it um, you can use any plate for this. This is a plate I had lying spare around, so you don't have to uh, to rely on anything. So and I can use this ball head with anything again without have to uh, detach the plate from this one. So now, uh, yeah, setup is done. You can easily loosen this screw, or some, if your head works different, of course, another screw, and can just um, sway it around, just lock it again, 
And the downside is that we cannot tilt it so it faces downwards. This is not possible in this build. Yet, um, I think this is better than nothing. Still, we can also um, get the light to point upwards, like this. And this bald head, which is um, set to hold up to 5 kilograms, works pretty damn good with this. It holds it perfectly, it works. And um, yeah, there's, I think this is the cheapest and easiest um, way to mount these tripods onto a normal lighting stand without using a C-stand, which is pretty cool, because C-stands are really expensive. Now, um, what you can do, just like I did here, you can face them upwards, or you can, of course, also mount them horizontally. So you have uh, it like this, and um, just light uh, a bigger space like this. So these lamps aren't perfect, they have some downsides. For instance, um, they do hum a bit. They make some noises, uh, which isn't really a problem when you are uh, filming with a shotgun mic, yet you have to know maybe they can make some noise. I just will show you an example. So another downside of these lights is that they can produce uh, flicker in your video footage. I just show you some examples. Now keep in mind that I live in a country with with uh, 50 hertz uh, power, and um, when you do something like uh, one sixtieth of a second in a 60 hertz country, this shouldn't be a problem at all. Just don't uh, set the shutter too fast. Um, then you might not have any problems with flicker at all. Of course, it's not perfect to have these downsides, yet I think, um, depending on the budget, it's uh, really something you can live with and it's not too bad at all. So now we covered the building process, we covered the downsides, the problems with this lamp, so just let's see the benefits and let's see some examples. So thanks for watching, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a little bit long, but I think uh, some things just need time. I hope this build might uh, improve your personal filmmaking. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments. I would be interested if you have some ideas on improving the system. Um, yeah, maybe subscribe to my videos, would be very kind from you. Uh, and then uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.